HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. And by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with everything you need to know about Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we will take you inside the Hopkinton Center for the Arts, enter stage left theater outdoor production of Shakespeare's Taming of the Shrew on the Town Common. We will show you some sights of Hopkinton throughout the month of July. A Hopkinton Hiller took home a big win on the golf course. And Courtney will let you know everything coming up on the HCAM channels with our HCAM Insider. But first, the Center for the Arts and the Upper Charles Trail Committee hosted the first ever Art on the Trail. You are viewing some art on the trail. This year, the Hopkinton Center for the Arts and the Upper Charles Trail Committee hosted the first Hopkinton Center Trail Art Walk. The Art Walk has an array of outdoor sculptures at highly visible sites along the Center Trail. Birdhouses with designs can also be seen along the trail. Toward the beginning of the trail, you will see a colored sand and pebbles design entitled Carpet. This was created by an Upton native by the name of Lauren Shore. The piece is inspired by Middle Eastern carpet designs. Some of the other groups and artists that helped create the work along the trail came from Michael is now Respite Center, the Hopkinton Senior Center, Golden Pond, the Serenity House, and Girl Scout Troop 85290. This is the first time the Hopkinton Center Trail Art Walk took place. This design is called Grandmother Spider. It was created by Kathy Weaver Taylor. On her website, kathyweavertaylor.com, she describes the piece as, quote, recycling of discarded material to make something new that shines in the light, reminding us of Grandmother Spider, connecting us all in this fragile place we call the web of life, unquote. This piece here is entitled Hope Imagined, Hope Realized. It was created by town clerk Jerry Holland, along with the help of members from the Serenity House. Among the contents inside the giant nest, there are painted stones with influential messages such as live, laugh, love, hope, and other positive messages. Saturday, September 19th at 2 p.m., local poets will be along the trail. The poets are using the trail and the artwork as influence for original poems 
to be read during the September 19th ceremony. Art on the trail will be displayed throughout the month of August up until September 26th. So you can walk or jog the trail and enjoy looking at some fantastic artwork. Art on the trail will be on display until September 26th. Poetry on the trail in which local poets will read their poems about the trail and art designs will take place Saturday, September 19th at 2 p.m. Recently, the Hopkinton Center for the Arts Enter Stage Left Theater Program performed Shakespeare's Taming of the Shrew on the Town Common. Director Thomas Key talked with HCAM News about the production. Mistress, you look so wrongly at the lad. Perhaps you marked not what's the catch and all. This is uh, our adaptation of Shakespeare's Taming of the Shrew. It's, uh, it's kind of a wild adaptation. Uh, we're really fortunate to have um, a person uh, from New York City, uh, Christy Artinian, who's the artistic director of a company there who did this particular adaptation, this edit of the of Taming of the Shrew, and uh, it's a little uh, turned on its head. Usually Taming of the Shrew is, uh, um, Kate and Petruchio are the central characters, and this is turned around, and now it's Kent and Petruchia. And uh, as opposed to having it set in Italy, we've changed a few names, and so it's set right here in Hopkinton, right here in Massachusetts. And uh, so it's a very modern adaptation. It's very slick, very fast adaptation. I think very funny, and you know we're enjoying uh, we're enjoying playing with it. Absolutely. Now, what kind of uh, audience would you recommend? Uh uh, for this, is it friendly to all ages? I mean, it is. I don't. Uh, I I don't think there's anything in it that's you know cuts b above PG thirteen. You know, uh, it's certainly all Shakespeare's words, really. Uh, it's just our cutting and adaptation of it. Some of the names are changed. So, you know, I think uh, little little kids might not get a lot of it, but there's a lot of physical comedy involved. So, you know, I think anybody can enjoy it. Now, could you talk about some of your history as a director? Have you done a lot of work here in Hopkinton? Have you done a lot of outdoor performances like this? I've done a lot of outdoor theater. Uh, this is my first time with this particular company. Uh, I've directed in New York, uh, directed in Boston. I've worked as an actor in Boston for quite a lot, quite a while. And um, yeah, I mean, I've done a quite a bit of Shakespeare, uh, directed Much Ado probably most recently in 2012 in New York City. And so, yeah, this is my first chance to work with this group of people, and they're fabulous. We're having a really just having a blast playing with the play. Excellent. Could you explain the process of getting this show together? Was it a long process? Did it take? A, I'm sure it took a lot of work. Well, yeah, we we rehearse over a span of about six weeks. Everybody, you know, has their own jobs, and they come to it, and it's it's incredible working with uh, this group of people because you know everybody's you know, puts in a full day's work and then they come and they bring such great energy and love of doing theater to the process. And so we get together, you know, a few times a week and just uh, spend a few hours just enjoying the play, learning a lot about, you know, what Shakespeare is really saying. And that's a big part of it. I think one of the strengths of the piece is that people will walk away really getting it, really hearing the play and really hearing the story. And that's something that I'm, you know, really it's a big part of what I try to do with Shakespeare is make it really understandable. I sort of grew up uh, watching Ke uh, Kenneth Branagh movies and and really enjoyed being able to actually hear and understand Shakespeare vis-a-vis uh, -vis his work. So that's what I try to make sure that happens in every uh, piece that I direct of Shakespeare's. Now obviously doing a performance outdoors, weather certainly is a little bit of a factor, but uh, Tonight's weather seems to be perfect for rehearsals, perfect and it's weather, looking yeah. like a good uh, a good weekend as well. Yeah, we got a nice breeze. I mean, I've done a lot of outdoor theater, and uh, it's always a challenge. Uh, but in a lot of ways, it's kind of like uh, the difference between uh, you know seeing a concert at TD Garden and seeing like an outdoor concert. You really get the spirit of like the people and the experience and being outside. It can be a lot of fun, you know, and you can, you know, bring your lawn chairs and, you know, a little snack and kind of really kick back after a long day and enjoy the play. We will have more from the Taming of the Shrew performance on the Town Common later in this newscast. The Mass Junior Championships brought many of the best high school golfers from around the state to the Hopkinton Country Club. One Hopkinton Hiller got to take home a trophy 
in his very own hometown. Hopkinton Country Club was the host to the final round of the Mass Junior Championship. Second round leader Davis Chatfield out of Locust Valley with a couple of quick birdies to take a four shot lead. But he had to hold off Hopkinton Country Club's own Jimmy Herval, who one year ago led the junior on the final day before fading. I thought about it a little bit. I knew since last year went, it didn't go well. I knew this year was the year. Herval a couple of birdies, followed by back-to-back -back Chatfield bogeys, and the pair were even on 14. We were all square after that, and uh, I don't know. I just thought I had to make a few birdies coming in order to, in order to win the thing. And he did on 14, the birdie, while Chatfield bogeyed. Suddenly, Herval led by two, but Chatfield bounced right back on 15 with the birdie. Yeah, that was a big putt. Uh, I came off three bogeys and I really needed something to get some momentum going into the last couple holes, and I'm glad I made that one. But Herval kept a one-shot lead with the first of two big back-to-back -back par savers. Yeah, those were big. Uh, I was putting well today, so that's what wins these tournaments is the putter. He made some putts when he really needed to. Chatfield nearly pulled even on 17. Almost another one on 17. Yeah, I was close. I thought that was going in, but just short. Yeah, he, he had me uh, worried there. I knew it wasn't going to be easy to come in, but um, you know I was able to keep my head up and just keep playing well. Coming to 18 with a one-shot lead, Herval finished with a two-stroke victory. Do you have to avoid thoughts of last year at all? Or? Uh, you know, I tried to early in the week, but I just kind of forgot about it as I played, and... You know, I just kept playing better and better. Oh, it feels great, especially uh, last year. I was in the lead after two days, and I just blew up the last day. So I can't tell you how awesome it feels to finally win this thing. Chatfield, a happy runner-up. Oh, it's amazing. Um, coming into this tournament, I would have definitely taken runner-up any day. So it's awesome. Nicholas Hampoian won the pre-junior division title. And in front of the gallery of friends, family, and club members, the 17-year-old Hopkinton native Herval captured the 2015 Massachusetts Junior Amateur Championship. It was awesome. I got to represent the club really well. Everyone here is supporting me. Uh, a lot of support. And I don't know, it just in order to win it in front of my friends and family, it just feels great. Congratulations to Jimmy Herval. Perhaps we have another Hopkinton native heading to the PGA. On the HCAM website or at seeninhopkinton.org, you can see some cool photos from around our community. Right now, we give you some of the sights around Hopkinton from this past July. Here are some community pictures you can currently see on our website, hcam.tv. On July 16th, Ashland Legion Baseball ended the 2015 regular season on a high note as they got a 4-1 win over Newton, Ashland post-77 finished 7-10-1 overall. On July 18th, Route 495 kept Hopkinton firefighters and police officers busy. Rescue 1 used the jaws of life to help extricate both patients. A2 and Westboro Medic 3 transported both patients to the local hospital. Another accident occurred while units were still operating at this incident requiring Milford to respond with a engine, rescue, and ambulance. This photo was tweeted by the Hopkinton Fire Union. On July 19th, the Metro West Symphony Orchestra performed for the crowd at the concert on the Common. On July 22nd, Hopkinton police tweeted this photo of Spring Street. The street closed due to a car hitting a pole. The road was closed most of the day. On July 23rd, the middle school looks empty and barren on the outside, but inside the work is non-stop to get ready for the students' return in September. On July 28th, Hiller Varsity girls head coach Mike Greco demonstrated a defensive drill at Hiller's youth basketball camp at the high school. Also on July 28th, while passing downpours hit the area, part of the sky remained blue in Hopkinton. Some weird New England weather. On July 29th, Hopkinton Fire Union tweeted this picture. It's the new Hopkinton Fire Department Ambulance 1. It's a Ford F-550 Horton with liquid ride, active suspension, and striker full power lift cot, and will be in service soon. For more pictures of Hopkinton, visit our website, hcam.tv, and also check out sceneinhopkinton.org. 
Coming up on HCAM News, we have a lot more from the Enter Stage Left Theater outdoor production of Shakespeare's Taming of the Shrew on the Town Common. And Courtney will have our HCAM Insider a lot more ahead. Stay tuned. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. And by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. We are the girls from Girl Scout Troop 72969 from Hopkinton. We would like to thank Mr. Terosian for the awesome tour of the H Camp Studio. If you are interested in fun and adventurous field trips, we recommend one, to learn a Girl Scout Troop. And two, visiting H Camp to see how local television is created and produced. We also want to give a shout out to Kalala Supermarket to thank Dale for our Girl Scout Troop tour. And for always giving us a space to set up our cookie booth. Welcome back to H Camp News. Earlier in the newscast, you met Thomas Key, the director of the Enter Stage Left theater production of Shakespeare's Taming of the Shrew, which took place at the Town Common. And now, you will meet some of the actors in addition to viewing some sights and sounds from what was a very successful outdoor production. From Thursday, July 30th through Saturday, August 1st, many locals enjoyed a night at the Town Common for a free viewing of Shakespeare's Taming of the Shrew from the Hopkinton Center for the Arts Enter Stage Left Theater program under the direction of Thomas Key. The play was a success and the performers enjoyed taking part in the outdoor production. Thou lovest it not and all my pains is sorted to no proof. Here, take away this dish. I pray you let it stay. This whole while, I prithee, Brother Kent, untie my hands. Now if that be Jess and all the Joe! rest be so. How now, what? sir? Whence grows this insolence? Um, so I'm playing Kenneth or Kent uh, in their version of Taming of the Shrew. Uh, the roles are kind of switched, so instead of Kate being tamed, Kent, uh, a male figure is being tamed uh, in this show. Is to pluck it out. Aye, uh, if the fool could find it where it lies. Who knows not where a wasp does wear his sting in his tail? Ah! Um, I've been acting for a really long time. I went to school for acting in Pennsylvania. Um, this is my fourth Shakespeare Under the Stars performance with uh, Enter Stage Left in Hopkinton Center for the Arts. Um, most recently I played uh, McMurphy in One Floor of the Cuckoo's Nest at Central Square Theatre in Cambridge. Um, I really like performing outdoors in a community theatre type setting uh, with the community and everything around here. So. Now I promise you have shown a tender motherly regard to wish me wed to half a lunatic. <laughs> Uh, they can expect to laugh a whole bunch. Uh, there's a lot of physical comedy, a lot of humiliation towards me. Um, so if you are a friend or an enemy of myself, then you'll definitely get a kick out of it. Um, and you also, if Shakespeare's kind of intimidated you in the past, this is one of the performances that I've done that it's really stripped down for you. It's very simple, it's very easy to understand, and they've done that through the physical actions and the physical comedy and made it really easy to understand for all ages. All right, and um, can you talk about uh, some of the work that you had to do to uh, get ready for this performance? I'd imagine it was pretty extensive. Um, I mean, most of it was just learning lines, which in Shakespeare is kind of difficult because um, you can't really mess up because it's in, you know, a type of talking that we don't really do anymore uh, so it's really extensive time on lines and then just in the rehearsal process it's getting comfortable with each other to explore those physical comedy bits and really just working those over and over and over again because if someone's off by a centimeter things aren't as funny as they could possibly be they, sh they shall go forward Kent at thy command obey the bridegroom you that tend on him Go to the feast, revel and domineer, be mad and merry, or go hang yourselves. But for my charm in Kent, he must with me. I'm playing Petruchia, um, who in this gender-swapped version tames the shrewish Kent. I am no child, no babe. Your betters have endured me, say my mind, and if you cannot, best you stop your ears. Way back in school, I did some acting that I didn't do any for a very long time, and back in 2012, a friend of mine dragged me into a community theater show and I haven't stopped since. He will not come? Oh, vile, intolerable, not to be endured. Sir Agrumio, 
Go to thy master, tell him I command him come to me. Um, there was a lot of lines to learn and you know a lot of a lot of things that you have to know and then you do them over and over again and then it just becomes natural. So by the time the show goes on, I don't think about it anymore. I did proceed in practice with my younger son. Petruchio, will you go with us or shall I send my son Kenneth to you? I pray you do. I'll attend him here. So I play Baptista, the um, gentlewoman who's the um, mother of the two sons. So one of the sons is the sort of, uh, we're referring to him as the dude, kind of the guy who never grows up and leaves the parents' basement. And the other son is sort of my do-good, very innocent, naive son. So a little bit my favorite. Um, the other one exasperates me all the time, so it's kind of funny. <laughs> Fox, meddle not with him. <laughs> For shame now, Hilding of a devilish spirit, why dost thou wrong him that ne'er did wrong thee? When did he cross thee with a bitter word? His silence flouts me, and I'll be revenged! Oh, what? In my sight? Bianco, get thee in. Now, could you talk about some of your uh, acting experience in the past? Well, um, as you know, I'm actually a singer and a songwriter. That's what I did for years. I toured around the country, and I used to perform a lot. And so after my second was born, and I was living in Hopkinton, I, did, I didn't have that outlet to perform anymore. So I hooked up with this local theater group here in town, um, Enter Stage Left Theater. and. I've done tragedies. Uh, I was I was in Anne Frank, Diary of Anne Frank. Um, I was in their production of Twelfth Night. I played Festy the Clown, and I played my ukulele. And I've been in their musicals. I did uh, tribute to the USO and, and lots of different stuff. So for me, it's been a great transition from being on the road, performing as a solo performing performer and singer to being in a troupe with such great, funny, fun people to be around. And a great director, a great assistant director. The whole crew is uh, it's top notch, so it's fun. You guys got to come. <laughs> <laughs> I think they'll be surprised, you know, because um, I think the kids, even the kids will get it. As I put on my Facebook post, uh, bring your kids and your uh, maybe not so uh, theater fanatic husbands, <laughs> speaking from experience. Um, you know, they don't think they're going to get a Shakespeare show, but as uh, you may have heard, this one's really sort of geared towards a basic understanding of the battle of the sexes, and it's just a romp, and it's... It's, I think they can expect just a lot of uh, fast-paced action and, and verbiage, <laughs> a la Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> can you talk about uh, some of the work you had to do uh, preparing for the play? Um, yeah, I, I don't have a, um, a very dialogue or monologue heavy role. I have, um, I'm sort of the flustered mom. I kind of come in and I come out and I run here and I run there. So for me, it was a matter of just really learning to listen to the pulse of the show and what, what's everybody else got going on here and how can I insert my my perspective in those parts. Um, so for me, I just had to just listen a lot. I come to rehearsal prepared with my own lines and then listen to what everybody else was doing. So it was a lot of fun. Be on the lookout for the full production of the Interstage Left Theater edition of Shakespeare's Taming of the Shrew, airing soon on HCAM. For more on what's coming up on the HCAM channels, we turn things over to our promotions coordinator, Courtney, with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Saturday, August 8th at 5.30 p.m., the Hopkinton Community Summer Band performs on a new Concerts on the Common. On Monday, August 10th at 9.30 p.m., Barbara Crooker discusses persistence and giving voice to the voiceless through poetry on poetic lines. It was a constant sending to contest, querying publishers, getting it back, sending it out again. Now, again, this connection to special education, we would call that uh, perseverative, repetitive behavior, and we would try to extinguish it. But in writing, that's what you do. You mm -hmm. just have to keep, there's nothing else to do but keep sending things out again, sending things out again. The Board of Selectmen meet on Tuesday, August 11th at 6.45 p.m., and the meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On a new Meet Your Neighbor, on Friday, August 14th at 9 p.m., Bill Shander discusses how perseverance helped him succeed with his business, and he shares how he came to Hopkinton. 
the phone rings for me. Like people say, hey, can we talk to you mm. about blah, blah, blah. Mm. Whereas in the old days, it was me frantically reaching out trying to find business, you know? <laughs> On Sunday, August 16th at 10 a.m., the planning board meeting from August 10th will air. Have you heard? There's a new way to sign up for the HCAM Insider now. Head on over to hcam.tv slash news updates to subscribe. You can even sign up for our daily news updates too. As always, thanks for watching. Thank you, Courtney. That will wrap up this edition of HCAM News. Be sure to check our website, hcam.tv, or find us on Facebook and Twitter to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton, including local events coming up. If you have a Hopkinton related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care and be well. Yeah.